Greetings, friends. Operational situation at the front on the 29th of April. At the end, we will talk to you about the forecasts. Oh, oh, very interesting news, of course. Well, let's start with a review of the front. Kapisko is the matchmaking section of the front, so Kislavka is the first. Active hostilities continue. Yesterday, by the end of the day, even after my broadcast, the evening number of Russian military commissars began to declare that they did not actually control the entire settlement, as they claimed, but only its eastern part. Actually, there have been no significant changes so far. It did not happen due to the fact that a number of measures were taken by the AFU, including counterattacks in the settlement itself. So, so far there have been no changes. But there is also a feature of the location of the settlement itself. Yes, it is very difficult to counterattack because in fact there is a very small transition from the central, western, and central parts of Kislovka to the eastern one here. Then there is an open field, if to the north, and to the south we have just the same beam and stakes, that is, a very narrow section. Therefore, so far, we are not talking about the fact that it will be possible to dislodge Russian troops in the near future. Because they have also used tactical aviation, on the contrary, they are making efforts to break through this intersection, which is also difficult for them to get into the central part. And they focus on Kotlyarovka, I would say even more now on Kotlyarovka than to advance in Kislovka itself. So here we have battles going on just the same on the near approaches, the northeastern outskirts, but without significant changes so far. And here is another point, a little to the south of us is Novoselovskaya. There was an attack from the Russian troops. From Kazemovka attacked in the south direction, in the direction of well, conditionally Strimakovka. Without any changes it was possible to repel the attack. That is, in fact, here they are probing now, not only the kislovka kotlirovka site, but also the neighboring site. Conditionally on Strimakovka. The change has not been fixed, everything has remained within the gray zone, but perhaps now they are activated by Tebev as starch. But time will tell. So far, we say that it has been relatively stabilized by the Apu. But this, I repeat, is also due to the specific location of the Kislovka itself, due to just the same open field, where drones see everything, and the beams at the bottom with the stake. Therefore, there are no significant changes here. The Lyman direction of the oppositional nature of the fighting, as well as the Severs direction. As for the Boyard direction, there were several messages. We will briefly go through it with you, only we will analyze the main points. It means that these active air bomb attacks on the city of Chaz Yar are continuing and the number of strikes should be noted has increased significantly now. Again, there was some decline, we stated it. After this slight decline, we again record a significant increase in these impacts. But what is the reason for this? Again, they are planning to increase the pressure, and you remember that. We commented a little more, and the fighters themselves commented from the direction that they had prepared forces, a shock fist in Bakhmut and accordingly, they would definitely try to carry out assault actions. But against the background of the Pokrovsky direction and the change of a number of plans, they naturally cannot be said to have directly postponed. But in general, they are trying to knock out more favorable conditions for offensive actions. So far, we are not recording exactly the same preparations for something in the near future. So far positionality is characteristic for this section of the front, but at the same time, I repeat, the number of strikes with aerial bombs has significantly increased. In other words, a very big bet is being placed on this from the Russian side. That is, to break up the building as much as possible. Well, in general, for the rest of everything, we have positionality. The main changes we have in the Pokrovsky direction. And here I will comment a little more than I wanted to. Before the broadcast itself, there were still some changes that were not included in my morning telegram summary. 
And that's where we start Novokalinov. Here there is the first advance of the enemy, confirmed by one of the fighters. So the situation has changed a little here for the ceramics. Well, let's make changes. So the first thing, as we have already said, there is a forest belt, which is questionable. Because there was information that they attacked, but then I personally did not have any new updated information. The next moment is Sadovaya Street. It goes here like its eastern part and the western part. In other words, it's all Sadovaya Street. It came under the control of the enemy because one of the fighters reported that now they completely control this street, both parts of it. And with regard to the outskirts of the ceramics, they reported that there is no, there is no here, just the same to Sadovaya Street. We have a rollback. Well, the situation today. The enemy managed to advance in an area to 56 kilometers wide to a depth of 750 meters. Active hostilities continue. Now, despite what we have said, they are trying to bypass the ceramics from Novokalinov, that is, from the north, we were drawing then. This moment, this is the first one, yes, they tried to break through to the ceramics, but they will still make their way through the center. In other words, we actually have the same situation as with Novomikhailovka. I predicted then, my forecast did not come true, and the soldiers of the 79th Brigade, as you remember, published footage where over 300, 316 armored vehicles were destroyed and shot down at that time. At the time of publication, this is a colossal amount, and I predicted that dozens of armored vehicles would be used by the Russian side. They will try to bypass from the south and from the north to close. There were attempts, but they still made their way through the center. In other words, we have a similar situation in this area. In other words, there are attempts to bypass, so to speak, to take a settlement with less losses, but no, no. Here we have to make our way through the main part of the settlement. Therefore, we are now stating that they are trying to break through and are going through the center again. That is, they will attack approximately further on this area. The Q. The situation here is very interesting, very interesting. You know, if I didn't want to cry, as they say. It's interesting because at some point, I already started saying that they seem to be like a few more broadcasts ago. It's a few days ago. Three or four ago, yes. That already it seems like they are even trying to break through this line, the so-called Poroshenko line, the Oral Arc, so the line of defense. Yes, and it seems to be looming in this. It's too early to say, because it seems like S. Novokalinova is going to this, but yes, now she is actually going to this. Let's go through the changes, and then I will give comments. It turns out, I hope you remember, we said that there is a height of 240. Then there is a height of 241, and a dominant height of 245, dominating this entire area. Not only over Pokrovsky as a whole, the World Award, a number of settlements, over a huge territory. And in general, they went, despite the fighting in the northeastern part of Beijing, they went further in the northwestern direction. To take this dominant height. Well, there is logic in the actions here, of course. We are adding an advance on a section up to 1 and 2 kilometers wide to a depth of 171 kilometers. In addition to taking the dominant height, they also advanced even further to the west, taking, so to speak, securing this dominant height even more from a flank counterattack, from a flank counterattack. But, as you remember, they dig in very quickly, I also emphasized that they can break through, dig in. And the Apu fighters themselves say a lot that they dig in very quickly, and this is really their plus. And in general, this is further progress, but it says that they now want to dig in very seriously, as quickly as possible. 
in the prevailing altitude, we will already look at it in fact, but in any case, not the best picture on the map is emerging yet. In general, actually, where this dominant height on the topographic map of Ukraine is exactly this point. So they went further along the road, taking one of the forest belts and partially the second one to the south in this area. But the most basic point is the dominant height of 245. The fighting continues in our area for the Hydro Canal, the micro district, that is, the northeastern part. The footage was published. I have also published them in my telegram. On the part of the AFU, an airstrike was carried out on the positions of Russian troops already in the building. Well, actually, there remains a minimal part. It is clear that the biggest building, it will be the hardest for the Russian troops. But they are also trying to work with bombs here now. Well, from the side of the VFSO, similar airstrikes are also inflicted on the enemy, so the fighting continues. But here the enemy no longer makes bets there that it will not succeed. There is military science here, and if we could not hold 70% of the settlement, as military science says, I'm not saying that, then further retention in a short and medium term becomes impossible if there is no major counterattack in this area in the short term. So far, we have this situation emerging. Those who I will not comment any more on some point to go further. But those who understand military science, you probably already understood, yes, what it went to. That's why I'm saying that the picture here is not the best for us yet. Very dangerous. In other words, it is already clear how they will act further Russian troops. But let's see, I still have hope that Sirsky will be able to level up. Exactly a line. I'm not talking for counterattacks, scum, but to level the situation, because. Because. Moving on. Not Tylova. Here we have added some clarifications. We added promotion yesterday. There were shots where the SSU inflicted fire damage on the positions of Russian troops where the personnel was recorded. From drones detected. And small clarifications have been added here. The situation looks like this. It is quite minimal, but it should be added here that the enemy is conducting active assault actions. Now he does not give up trying. And at the same time, at the same time, it is too early to speak for the opposition north of the river, north of the stakes. But he is definitely at the expense of the southern positions when he will be able to more stably level the position here and gain a foothold. Yes, the pressure will begin just the same on this part. Why this one? Here is an open field on the one hand. Yes, he has somewhere else to catch on, just a small building. Several forest belts with vegetation. There is a green area, and he will try to transfer some forces. Most likely, it will be foot assault groups without armor to a small landing north of Ne Tailova. Chkalov Street. It means north of the Bet, where it is located. And in this way, if it is not possible to break through in a short time, it will try to push firm to directions. As it was, we actually had the end of the battle for Pervomaisk when he pressed from the water, as you remember. And not only in Pervomaisk there was pressure, but also to the north. From the water, this is the first moment then the second moment again, further along the water, again in the south direction. That is, firm two presses. And similarly, most likely, since he has already had this tactic here twice, well, he will most likely resort to it for the third time. In general, time will tell. The fighting is active and continues both in this sector of the front, and further attempts are being made south of Pervomaisky. With the same wide coverage, but I will comment a little more here in the south direction to press, in the direction of the Damak beam. We said that there are several intersections in the south direction and abandoned orchards, the territory of the abandoned. But here now it has shifted a little more to the west, that is, there are also along this line, 
but these are again small assault groups. This is reconnaissance by combat. This is the Jurg. This is exactly the same thing. To disperse our forces on the widest possible section of the front, with the widest possible coverage, therefore attacks. Most of them, of course, are distracting, but this is one of the tactics of the chosen enemy. Moving on. Then we have Krasnogorovka without significant changes. So far, all the fighting that takes place is either a red zone or a dynamic situation within the gray zone. That's why it's short here. As for the South Donetsk sector of the front and the machine builder, we said only yesterday that the enemy does not give up trying to put pressure on the machine builder, the Garden Association. Well, in general, today there is information that Russian troops managed to capture the territory of the Garden Association. So we will look at the situation here from a wide angle. The situation for yesterday, the situation for today. In a section up to 358 kilometers wide, we advanced to a depth of 950 meters. Well, accordingly, they took one of the roads leading to the Garden Association Mashinostroidal under control. And accordingly, the front line was relatively leveled. Here you can comment on what will happen next. Then they have two directions. This is of course a victory, to increase the pressure and Poroskovyevka. Will they go to Proskovyevka, let's say, after the losses that were published by the 79th video, Brigade? It is the loss of equipment from the Russian side. It is unlikely that they will resort to the same tactics. And in Novomikhailovka itself, drones and drones with resets are now actively working in PIVI. In other words, there is still a need for the Russian side to work with RAP systems, complexes, and so on and so on. That is, due to the proximity of the positions of Novomikhailovka, Konstantinovka is not the most. Well, it's clear that this is not a gift from our side either, because the enemy also has drones in the sky. There is also tactical aviation, the superiority of aerial bombs is a huge amount, of course. That is, I will not present it alone, as it is difficult. But for the Russian armed forces, the APU is not a gift here, believe me. Yes, we have a bad situation right now. In fact, we have been stating only their progress since October. For March and April, they advanced every day, that is, there was not a single day that they did not advance in March or April. And most likely, if they have progress towards this tomorrow, everything is going there on a number of sites, including Novo Kalinova. It will turn out that 31 days of March and 30 days of April, they are every day. This is a very shitty situation. It is clear that this puts a lot of pressure on morally, but the APU is making every effort to stabilize the situation as much as they can. So, where will they put pressure? Not Konstantinovka. Will there be Dirk activity? 100% will be. And will there be scouts fighting in the near future? 100% will be. As for Poroskovivka, it's not her, let's just say, it will be difficult to break through to her. Because there is a line of defense in front of Poroskovivka itself, including in the fields. The enemy has the proximity of positions, if he manages to advance here from the Dacha village. But again, it is clear that there will be attempts, but now a lot of experts have a bigger eye on victory, namely the village of victory. Why, if they manage to take its southern part, it will give them the opportunity to advance to Konstantinovka, and this accordingly. The closer they get to Konstantinovka, although there is also not weak or very serious, there is not that weak, very serious line of defense, then it is just the same supply of Proskovivka. Here we have only one road, there are no more roads here, specific. Well, we will look further on how it will be, because it's too early to make a guess. Because a lot depends, as has already been announced by President Zelensky, on the speed of logistics of supplies that will be sent to the front in Ukraine. Let's initially go to Ukraine, then we will distribute it ourselves. This is a lot, this is the key point. Someone there says that yesterday they talked for four or five days, today it's three or four days naturally, but in general, 
it will definitely affect the battlefield. We have considered the worst case scenario so far, but of course when this aid is all Western. The most important thing is ammunition for barrel rocket artillery. Then we will already see a different reality on the battlefield.